In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. This is Psalm 52. The fool, the modern man, <clears throat> godless, his head, head filled with all the lies of the media, who wastes his time abundantly on emptiness. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done things that must be abhorred. There is not one who does what is good. This is the complaint of God himself, Psalm 52. God looks down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there be one who understands and seeks God. All have gone astray together. They are turned to wickedness. There is none, not one, who does what is right. There is not even one. Will they not return to their senses, they who do evil, who eat up my people as they eat bread, who call not upon God? They tremble with fear where there was no fear. For God had scattered the bones of them that were camped against thee. They are put to shame because God has cast them off. This well describes uh, what St. Pius X said a hundred years ago. And a hundred years ago in August will be the hundred years of his, since his death. And how well this describes our time. He says these are, these are the ages of apostasy that we are in. And when he, <clears throat> the seminarians in Boston, Kentucky, at the seminary of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, they are studying now the encyclical of Paschendi, the encyclical of Pius X condemning modernism. And um, uh, it's anything as many describe it, and even on the, strangely to say, or maybe not so strange, even on the Society of St. Pius X the website, when they define modernism, it's a philosophical error of, you know, sometime in the past, and, well, it's, it's still around, but it's not, you know, it's some philosophical thought. But modernism, as, if you read Paschendi, is far more than just some philosophical error. Modernism is, is a wholesale attack on the Catholic faith, and it hits every single level, theological, philosophical, all the sciences, science, liturgical, the reformer, the catechist, the believer, at every single level, clergy, laity, the mass, the rubrics of the Mass, the books, how people view science, how people view the faith, how people view the relations of science and faith, the church and state, every bit of it is poisoned. And it fills modern thought. Pius X, it's incredible that his, his encyclical so well nails the error. But far from just being some philosophical thought that's still floating around, it penetrates every level of society now. And, and most people, even we, we're poisoned with this atmosphere. We're poisoned with this whole idea. Just, just a, and and the, the, foundation of, the foundation of modernism is what? St. Pius X said, it is evolution. And evolution just penetrates everywhere. The scientific evolution, which is total lies and nonsense. And one thing you should know, two Catholic priests were very much involved with laying the foundations of scientific uh, evolution. But that's not the only evolution. But scientific evolution, it was Father Teilhard de Chardin, a total modernist who lost the faith. And uh, he's the one that dug up the so-called bones which he said were the missing links to prove that man came from apes. Turns out the bones later were found to be pieces well-filed, well-stained, well, -filed, well, -stained, well uh, 
make made up with cosmetics to look like old bones, uh, and, and it was bones of pigs. And then another priest, a French priest, in the early 1900s, who invented the theory of the Big Bang. It was a two Catholic priests who deeply betrayed our Lord. Modernists, liberals, poisoned. Now, when Pius X hammered the, the modernism in his day, it was already deeply infected in the church. So St. Pius X, his, his greatness was not just his blowing his horn and saying, there's poison out there, keep your head up. But he took action as a pope. Just like a father of a family, he has to take action if there's poison in his house. He's got to clean it out. If there's anything threatening the souls or the health of his children, he's got to clean it out. So the father of the, of the whole church, he, he not only uh, warned, but he laid down the rules. And he had the bishops join forces to clean out the mess. And they, he, he took the, uh, the vigilante priests who were to guard and watch over in every diocese all the books that were published, all the catechisms, all the university professors, and if any of them were tainted with modernism, gone. And he, he was the one that on all Catholic books you have the imprimatur and the Nicolaopstadt. These are like the stamp of approval. Uh, these, this came from Pius X. And he also uh, enforced the anti-modernist oath. But uh, modernism is so, it's so slippery. You grab it, and it slips out, and it comes out another way. It's, it's a deadly, deadly, it's straight from hell, modernism. And it it's completely fills the minds of all the conciliar churchmen right now. This Pope, Benedict XVI, every one of them is modernist. They're, they're poisoned with it. And this is why it's, it's amazing that, it's just amazing that Bishop Follet could say, after two years of the, dog, the doctrinal discussions with Rome, Bishop Follet, at least he was honest to admit, the modernists, these men in Rome, they don't have the faith. As the two years of, of the dis destruction discussions proved. And one of the priests on the panel of discussions, the Society of St. Pius X priests, he said, not only do these men not have the faith, they're, these men are sick. They're sick in their head. And when Father Malachi Martin speaks about satanic rituals in the Vatican, you see how sick it is. And when, uh, uh, I hate to bring these things up with children, but when a Vatican, um, a Vatican, uh, what do you call those men in the, in the suits designed by Michelangelo, um, the Swiss guards, they had to be a Swiss unmarried man who's, who's chased for at least some time. Uh, when they report that they've been uh, um, approached in a most sinful way by cardinals and bishops, you know these men are sick. Deeply sick. And so, for Bishop Fouslay to say the doctrinal discussions prove they don't have the faith, and in the very next paragraph, in his letter to all the priests, says, but we still must seek recognition from these conciliar authorities. We still must seek an agreement with Rome. Modernist Rome. It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. And, and, the, and the, the, the basis of Bishop Follet's error is he has put together in one entity the Catholic Church of Tradition, which we adhere to, which we're ready to die for by the grace of God, and all the martyrs died for, and it cannot change. It's the same faith from the first saints, the apostles, to the saints of the 400s, the saints of the Middle Ages, saints of the Renaissance, saints of 100 years ago, to now. It's the same Catholic faith. And that Catholic faith, he comes... He puts it in one entity with the conciliar church.
And that's that's about what is worth <clears throat> of the conciliar church. You can just weep over the state the state of this mess. <clears throat> But the conciliar church is, is not the Catholic church. Although it comprises churchmen. Although it comprises a pope. So what, what we have now is one pope over two churches. And as Gustavo Corsao, a great Catholic writer and thinker in, in Brazil, much admired by Dom Thomas Aquinas uh, in Brazil, he said years ago you used to have uh, two or three anti-popes over one church. But now we've got two churches and one pope. And Bishop Fillet's error is he combines the two churches into one. But Archbishop Lefebvre had the wisdom, and he just quoted the modernists themselves. They themselves says, called it the conciliar church. And that conciliar church was fabricated at the council. And it goes totally against all of tradition, all that the popes have condemned and stood for. And that's why in the healthier days of the Society of St. Pius X, in 1988, do you all remember, all the superiors and the priors throughout the world signed a letter writing to the pope, saying, please excommunicate us also, because we want nothing to do with this conciliar church, this, this uh, church of Assisi, this church of the pantheon of all false religions. We want to remain Catholic and we profess it publicly. Those were the good old days of the society. But as you know, in 1997, <clears throat> it, uh, the, the steps to the betrayal were already taking place. I never caught it. I don't think any of, most of us ever caught it. But uh, the steps were already be ta being taken for compromise. In 1997, this was where Father Lalong, uh, in his book Towards the Reconciliation with Rome, he said that Bishop Fillet, he quotes Bishop Fillet and Rome saying, keep this quiet, don't release this to the media. And they were having discussions about what the steps towards the reconciliation with modernist Rome, reconciling the true Catholic Church of tradition with the conciliar beast, reconciling Christ with Satan, reconciling light with darkness. You can't. You just can't. And there's a war. What we're watching, what's happening now is a drama of the battle between two religions. <clears throat> and now that drama is in the Society of St. Pius X. And the leaders want to go with that new religion. They're trying to bend backwards to excuse and bend to be reconciled and no, recognized by these destroyers of the faith. And it just can't be. And Archbishop Lefebvre, as you know so well, just reread his writings. Does he talk ambiguously? Does he talk confusedly? Does he talk contradictorily? No. He's very clear. We want nothing to do with this conciliar church. We reject the reforms. We reject the council errors from which it comes. We reject <clears throat> the new theology, the new philosophy, the new uh, mass, the new catechism, the new code of canon law, right down the line, because it's all poisoned with these new error, the new doctrines that are already been condemned by the church. So, our Lord in this gospel of this mass, he comes to the shores of Genezareth, and all the people bring him all the sick, all the lame, all the blind. They they empty out the hospitals. They bring all the children in some of their wheelchairs and their and their uh, and their uh, crutches and the old people, and women who, who can't have children. They come to our Lord begging Him to bless them so they can have children. And our Lord goes through all the crowds, and the miracles just pour out from His sacred heart like, like a rainstorm. It just He cures them all. And uh, the cures are innumerable. But we also, this is why Lent is so important for us, we're all sick. 
We're all poisoned. We all breathe this air that penetrates the whole world of apostasy, of naturalism, of evolution, of atheism, of Judeo Freemasonry. We all breathe this air of liberalism. And all of us are liberals to some degree. We're all poisoned. So we all, and plus on top of that, our own sins. The sins. So we're all, we're all the sick that must come to the doctor. The doctor is our Lord Jesus Christ, as St. Augustine says. He alone can cure us. He alone can heal the soul. He alone can heal the wounds of sin. And that's why the sacraments are so powerful and so beautiful. And that's why Satan had to destroy not only the faith, not only the mass, but the, all the sacraments. And the new rites of sacraments are, are, are... They're not all absolutely valid. And that's why it's, it's unbelievable that Bishop Follet could sign that doc, doctrinal declaration saying that we recognize as valid and legitimate all the Novus Ordo sacraments. They're not. Why do you think the bishops have been all these years conditionally confirming all over the world? Because the oils they use are doubtful. They don't anymore use the olive oil. And olive oil was always the oil established and reverenced and respected by all of tradition that that was the oil Christ instituted to be used. It's the first time in history they use vegetable oil, palm oil, coconut oil, whatever. And that alone is sufficient to say these are doubtful sacraments, let alone the changing of the words for confirmation, the fuddling with the ceremonies of, of ordination as well. And that's why it's always been in practice in the society, quite systematically, and Father Joe Pfeiffer and I remember this. We were sacristans together in Winona. And we all, we remember priests, novice Soto priests coming to tradition. And they start saying the Tridentine Mass, they discover tradition, they, they see they've been robbed, they see they've been um, lied to, and they want to be real priests. And often, how often it happened, Bishop Williamson, during the time Archbishop Lefebvre was alive. And I'm sure Bishop Williamson called Archbishop Lefebvre, said, what do I do? These new priests are coming in. And uh, every time there was a conditional ordination. A conditional ordination. We did it quite often. We had to set up. And some of them were kept clandestine, because that was the priest's choice. But Bishop Williamson always did it. And Bishop Tissier and uh, Bishop Follet used to. But now they're doing it less and less. If you've ever noticed, many novice order priests coming in, they, they're told, no, you don't need to be conditionally re reordained. And it's at least doubtful. It's at least doubtful, which is sufficient reason to, to do the sacrament traditionally. So we are, all, we are all the sick that need to come to our Lord. And um, there is no other doctor. There is no other remedy. There is no other. Allah is from hell. Muhammad, his prophet, is burning in hell. Luther, the founder of the Protestant, uh, died a horrible death. And he was a priest that broke his vows and married a nun that broke her vows. So the founder of the Protestant sects and denominations is false. And Joseph Smith of the Mormons, what a joke. I mean, where's these golden plates? And he blasphemously says in his earlier doctrine, of course their doctrine changes, uh, the Mormons used to teach that blacks were the children of Lucifer, and they had to be uh, repressed and segregated. Of course, in the 50s, that wouldn't go on any well, too well after the 1960s and 50s. So... Uh, it wasn't politi politically correct to hold their doctrine anymore, so they changed it to say that uh, now the blacks are equal with the whites. But they also taught that Christ was the son of the Father and his brother was Lucifer. And that's blasphemy. Firstly, it denies Christ's divinity. Secondly, it debases Christ to the level of an angel. 
when he is being God, is infinitely above an angel. He's the creator of angels. So that's just one example. Uh, so these false religions across the board, every one of them is false. And this is why uh, this coexistence, this whole Freemasonic push to uh, join all the world religions, coming from these Vatican II popes, joining all the world religions to pray together in Assisi. And Pope Francis, very ecumenical with all the false religions and with the Jews. These, these, these things so seriously offend God. And then they're always talking about, let's pray together for peace, peace in the world, love and peace. But what they're doing pulls down from heaven the anger of God and the punishment of heaven. Anything but peace. It's, it brings down the chastisement of heaven. So, Christ is the only, the only Savior. There is no other. And not the, not, and we want to stay with Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ, who is truly God, who is truly the High Priest forever, who is truly King. And we profess no other but the true Jesus Christ, not the Protestant Jesus Christ. And we don't want to follow the, even the Greek Orthodox Jesus Christ, because they refused the primacy of Peter. They refused the, the filioque, that the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son. And you can't save your soul if you deny the true Catholic doctrine, even though they have a beautiful traditional liturgy, which tells us it's not enough just to have the traditional Mass. You need to have the true faith. That's why St. Peter's, uh, they compromise on doctrine. They have the true Mass, but they compromise on doctrine. That's why you cannot participate in that. And now the Society of St. Pius X has taken that same step. And apparently, Father Pfluger has revealed to a number of priests that apparently he said that the agreement with Rome will be done before the year is up. And quite honestly, that will be a blessing. And pray for all the priests, because once that agreement goes through, there's no way they can stay with the society. No way. And you cannot go to their mass. You cannot. They're, they're, it's another religion. Because we're at war. There are two religions at war here. The Catholic religion and the, the, the Jesus Christ, conciliar Jesus Christ. And we refuse that one too. Because Jesus Christ is not just our, our buddy and our brother that you can receive on your hand. Jesus Christ is not just uh, represented by a president of the assembly of the priest at the altar. He's a priest anointed to offer sacrifice. So there are two religions at war here. And it's a, we, we have witnessed, as Bishop Tissier said... It's a hijacking of the Catholic religion. So all the authorities who are in place and well prepared for the last hundred years, these authorities are modernists and they're tearing the church down from within. And so this is, this is your honor. This is your joy. This is our privilege by no merit of ours, but solely by the mercy and the grace of God that, that we can still know the true religion and still have professed the true Catholic faith of all time. And that means, yeah, it means a lot of discomfort. It means a lot of inconvenience. It means maybe even our death. It means maybe even our imprisonment. And this is nothing new in the history of the Catholic Church. It's, it's, it's as old as the hills, quite truthfully. Just read any period of church history. However, this is the worst. Archbishop Lefebvre, listen to his words. One must take it or leave it. The Catholic religion, you take it or leave it. There's no playing with it. Either this is the end of Catholicism, or we truly defend our Lord Jesus Christ and the whole church and the whole Catholic religion. If we start to cohabit with evil, to discuss endlessly with evil, 
to make compromises with evil, then we've lost. We've lost. In other words, if we start discussing with the conciliar church, if we start endlessly making compromise with it, we lose. And this is the direction now of our dear society, of St. Pius X. It's, it's, it's lamentable. Another one from Archbishop Lefebvre. This is taken in 1988, in September. He, Archbishop Lefebvre expressed his astonishment regarding the number of encyclicals on Freemasonry by the popes. Why talk about those things in a seminary? as if this were the knowledge needed to be acquired in a seminary, as if there were, this was what was needed to be taught to the faithful. But if one does not know the source of errors, of what destroys society, souls, and the church, we would be incompetent shepherds. So why then, open brackets, why then have they removed Father Dennis Fay from all the Society of St. Pius X bookstores? Father Dennis Fay, who was a Holy Ghost father, he was taught in the same seminary as Archbishop Lefebvre in Rome 13 years before him. So he had the same professor, Father Lefloc. And Father Dennis Fay, I'm sure you're familiar with some of his works, he, he exposes the Judeo Masons, he exposes the work of the enemies of Christ and the lodges within the society, within the church. So why is he cleared out? Because he's not politically correct. Why do they now make fun of Bishop Williamson as this conspiracist? Why do they expel him? Why do they now mock him and, and ridicule him? And I hear this now even, sadly to say, even from priests who were formed by him. It's terrible. The Bishop, Bishop Williamson is just ex expressing, exposing what's the, the way it is. So Archbishop Lefebvre is saying, you have to teach this in the seminaries. Because if the priests don't know the real enemy, what kind of shepherds are they going to be? They're just going to go right along with the mainstream media. And that's what's happening. Archbishop Lefebvre, it is an absolute requirement to study liberalism and to st understand it well. And I think that many of those who left us to rejoin Rome did not understand what is liberalism and how Roman authorities, since the council, are infested with these errors. If they had understood it, they would have fled it and stayed with us. This is serious because by drawing close to these authorities, the Roman modernist authorities, the conciliar authorities, a person is inevitably contaminated. I asked Don Thomas Aquinas, is there a similar pattern, what Bishop Fillet is doing, to what Bishop Rifan did? Bishop Rifan, he saw the steps Bishop Rifan took to compromise with Rome. He says it's exactly the same pattern. They start having meals together, they start dialoguing together, they start discussing the possibilities of reconciliation, and then uh, they stop condemning the modernist errors. They stop condemning the new mass in Vatican II. They stop condemning the reigning errors of the reigning pope. And this is exactly what's happening. And then uh, they make an agreement. And what did, what did Bishop Rafan say? He said, we didn't seek an agreement. We only sought to be recognized. So we have our right to exist. And Rome said, yeah, you can have your Latin Mass. You can even preach against modernism. Go ahead. And you can even train priests the old-fashioned way. Go ahead. And then three, four, five years down the road, who makes the decisions on who becomes bishop? Who makes the decision on big questions and decisions? Who makes the final choice of who's the superior general? Rome's not stupid. They've been at this for years. The Freemasons, <laughs> they're sly foxes. We're just pigeons up to their, up against their satanic cunning. 
Bishop Filet is, is, a, is a little boy up, up against a satanic master. And the sad thing is, he did not heed the warnings of our founder. Because now he's ready for the agreement. And he said this recently, I don't seek an agreement with Rome. All we want is to be recognized, to have justice done. But what's the difference? <laughs> Archbishop Lefebvre, by drawing close to these authorities, a person is inevitably contaminated. They are the authorities, and we are the subordinates. They impose their principles on us. So long as they do not rid themselves of these liberal errors, there is no way to come to an agreement with them, it is not just, it's just not possible. And listen to this, liberals are nowadays, Archbishop Lefebvre, so widespread within the church to such an extent that one wonders who is not a liberal. Soon we will be able to count on our fingers the few individuals that truly respect the church's doctrine. Wow. So, dear faithful, it comes back always to uh, the heart of our fight. And it's been the heart of the fight since the end of the, end of the Middle Ages. It's the fight for the true faith that cannot change, does not change. Because ego Deus et non mutor. I am God and I do not change. This is the words of his own mouth in Scripture. And the faith does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. He doesn't change. And Pius X, he exposes these modernists, as I was telling you before. They base everything on evolution. So, evolution, dogma must change. The faith must change. Since faith is the conformity of of uh, the mind with life and no longer the, of the mind with reality but with life then the faith has to be living if the faith has to be living that means it has to be felt and emotionally actively participated in hence the push for dialogue mass hence the push for the new mass with every form of liturgy you can imagine from clown masses to I don't even want to go through the list. It's it's a shame. It's a it's a it's a unbelievable. So this is the fight right now. Do you want to go with the conciliar church? Do you want to go with the conciliar religion? Do you want to accept Vatican II with a new uh, layer of frosting called light of tradition? This is the, it's just dressed up with a new layer. And if you swallow Vatican II with the light of tradition, you're still swallowing Vatican II. And this, this is the poison that's in now. And this is why we, we must stay Catholic. And every baptized Catholic has, has the duty to resist this new direction of tradition, of the Society of St. Pius X. Pray for Bishop Vallée, pray for all the priests, and uh, if that agreement happens, it'll be a big blessing. If it doesn't happen, it'll be worse. Because the poison is in. And it's like a, a skin dissolving disease. It just eats and eats and corrodes. At least when the agreement actually comes publicly, the long desired agreement that Bishop Filet and the leaders have been working for for all these years, at least when it happens, then the line is clear. Then you choose sides. It's clear now, but for many people it's not clear. At least then they have no excuse. You've seen it. That's why you're here. But many priests see it, and they're still afraid. But when it's done, I, th I hope and pray many good priests will, will step with the real SSPX Marian Corps that want to just do what Archbishop Lefebvre always uh, Lay down what to do to keep the faith in the true Mass. So, dear faithful, persevere. And we enter this beautiful 40 days of Lent, which is not really even strictly 40 days. 
uh, you really only do about 36, because Sundays are never fast days, and then, uh, you know, you lose some days <clears throat> from Ash Wednesday. So, but be generous. Be generous with God. The old rule is fast. Fast. We all must do penance. We've all offended God. We must make reparation. We must make reparation. So whatever way you do your penance, between you and the good Lord, uh, be generous for souls. In the traditional fast, of course, is one full meal, two snacks. Two snacks, which isn't even asking much. But, but do at least that, if you can, and uh, strive to grow. Make this a 40-day retreat to grow closer to God. Reread the Archbishop's writings. And uh, follow the, every day the church gives you a full gourmet meal to eat. Every day there's a mass with epistle, gospel, introit, colic. You can meditate on that every single day during Lent. That's your meal for your soul. So, and also remember we must make reparation. The anger of God is hanging over this world. His arm is about to strike but prayer and penance can at least delay it and can even avert it altogether. But at least for you, uh, dear faithful, uh, be generous with God and help Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, to save the, the, the souls, so many souls who are plunging into hell. That's really the bottom line. Is It's about souls going to hell. And... Uh, there's only one way to save them, and that's through our Lord Jesus Christ, through the true faith, through the true sacraments. There's no other way. So be generous in this Lent, and whatever penance you embrace, uh, unite it to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and she'll take our little toothpick penances, and she'll turn it to gold and dress it with flowers and vases and, and perfume it and, and present it to the Blessed Trinity, and it becomes much more worthy. So, and, 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 and also, don't forget, <clears throat> pray the rosary every day. Every day in Lent, pray it. And more than one, if you can. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. In the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen.